the Wolverine.com hockey season preview. I am here with Noah Rudin, former goalie at Michigan, Dave Hunsaker, former defenseman at Michigan, and Brandon Kalanicki, former forward at Michigan. Guys, new season, the team is actually practicing behind us right now, uh, getting ready for it. A lot of changes that have taken place coming into the season. The big one, obviously, Big Ten. You guys never got a chance to play in the Big Ten. How do you think this is going to go with just five teams that Michigan's going to be playing out against? I personally think it's really exciting. I, I know every time that we went out to Wisconsin and Minnesota, those are two games and uh, really nice to meet So I think you know, only five teams is still going to be fresh and exciting for everybody, for the fans too, to see big programs coming together. Penn State's going to be exciting to see what their arena's like, what their team they can do the first year. So I think I know it's only five teams, but it's... Six teams, five opponents. But it's going well, to be, a, a, I think, a lot of fun for them the first year to have those sets. I think it changes the, the dynamic of everything quite a bit because you're no longer playing, you know, Ferris State, Lake State, where no matter what the records are, Michigan coming to play Ferris or Lake State, it's, you know, they're always going to be there. Whereas, you know, Big Ten, everybody's really has a quite a tradition, you know, I mean, Ohio State's still fairly new, but, you know, besides Penn State, everybody's been a hockey power. So it changes, changes that aspect of it quite a bit, you know, they're not going into well, certainly, the, when you look at it, I mean, Minnesota and Michigan are two of the most storied programs in college hockey history. Uh, Wisconsin has had great success, uh, especially under Mike Hughes. I mean, they've done some really nice things. Um, you know, Michigan State is, is down a little bit right now. Uh, Tom Anastas is, is struggling with trying to get his, his feet underneath him, but uh, has been a great program. When you look at it, and, and I don't know how much you guys had a chance to look at the other teams, but you know, Minnesota is the number one team in the country last year until they lost to Yale. I, I thought what was interesting is that on last week, Michigan got voted third in the preseason. When's the last time you can remember Michigan not being one or two in the preseason polls? It's been a long time. You know, one thing Wisconsin very talented, but we only, we only play them once a year. Wisconsin very talented, play them once a year. When you play them three or four times, you develop that, that, that future for the team. So you're going to miss that, so that'll be the golf over the last five years. How long do you think it'll take to beat Minnesota? Yeah. Uh, the first time they put a big number on you, uh, <laughs> but the thing is, you have to play them the next night, which is not something that's typically happened for us. And really, those second night games tend to be a little bit more shifty. See a lot more penalties. And that's really the developers' rivals. Well, I know that uh, one of the things that comes with this Big Ten, and, and Dave and I were talking about it a little bit earlier, but the non-conference schedule changes dramatically because you have so many games to fill. And I think it was when you guys were playing, Boston College came here. Uh, I believe the, the you know, everybody remembers it because it was, I think, Jack's first game. Jack Johnson's first game, and one of his first shots, like he hit Corey Schneider in the helmet, and his mask came off, and everyone went, oh my God, this kid's really as good as, as we thought he was going to be. What is this not conference like for you guys to see Boston College, BU, New Hampshire, UMass Lowell, RIT, all these great teams are on the schedule all at the same time? Well, I think it's, it's a, it's good for the program to establish themselves and say, we're not doing this, we're not taking a walk, we're Hey, we're still a national powerhouse, we're still Michigan, and we can play with all these East Coast teams that maybe some uh, people think are, are stronger than our program would be. I like it a lot. Not only does it give everyone a witness test early on in the season, but you always enjoy playing different conferences, see what their styles are, see what those, you know, you hear about them a lot. We unfortunately, because we had such a big CCJ schedule, we didn't go all east that much at all. I think we were in New Hampshire once and it was only the tournament. BC came to us, so a few of these smaller schools came to us. I got to imagine for the program for the players, they're probably really excited to go out east and to actually play all these uh, other conferences. It's very exciting. They didn't get their, they weren't uh, any, they they didn't, they weren't, they weren't, at least they weren't as prominent yeah. as they, they were in the past couple of years. Yeah, so that's exciting, and you think about it for the NCAA tournament. So you get to see these teams early in the season, if you make it to the NCAA tournament, you've seen, you kind of have a little bit more to go on. You've seen that kind of how it's played, and you've seen the hot piece because you've played a couple of teams. So you kind of at least have a little bit better to understand what the team is. It's kind of like the D6 and it's nice to have those strong so at the end of the season, if you're taking out a lot of 
CCHA teams that might have helped you out, but you can fill it with top 15 teams, either wins or losses. Those are, are going to look good, hopefully, with wins. Uh, you know, when you come towards the end of the season, you're trying to get those points out there uh, to, to get inside the bubble.